Hey, this is Ada. And this is Stefan. And welcome to Living Simply in Mexico. The ugly side of owning a home in Mexico. Now that may be uh, a condo, but a house is, is quadruple the ugly. We are in a tropical, humid, hot climate in the summer during the lower season when you're gone is kind of the great time for your maintenance people to work on the house our contractor was not able to um, to work over the last month we gave him this whole list yes. and it's like because we had more things to add to the list so the key thing on this list is there's always going to be something on the list and if you do not keep up with it it'll keep on building and building and building. So let's talk about some of the things that we had to do. Now, now this goes over probably about a two month period this summer of all the things that we've done. So this is not over like one or two days. So don't get too scared. Looks like, like our ceiling fan is going. <laughs> it's actually good being down here during the rainy season because then you can kind of figure out where all your leaks really are. It may be a downpour and you didn't suspect any leaks and right. there was something and you fix it, that's great. And then you have a different lighter storm and then it's leaking somewhere else. Somewhere else, yeah. And what we realized is that um, the wind has a huge factor um, on your leaks because sometimes the wind's blowing, it'll hit your window. Usually houses here have um, a roof on it and the windows behind it. But if you've got wind coming this direction, uh, all bets are off. Just one storm, we had a ton of water come into our master bedroom and it got all over the floor, pretty soaking. Another one, the main doors in our main living room, the rain was going sideways and it blew underneath. We thought we had a leak in the roof, but it actually blew underneath the doors, which was pretty crazy. The roofs are always a pain. Our, na our neighbors are always sitting in the roofs and uh, uh, we have that same issue where in one of our bedrooms upstairs, I, I sealed it, but water is still dripping down through the roof. It doesn't drip down directly where it comes in the roof. It may go in one place and then go down a crack or something in your concrete and then drip down another. And so you have to pretty much seal your entire roof in order to, to make that happen. So we had a lot of that. That's still in progress. Um, uh, uh, we've got one or two more, more leaks to do or fix. Especially like the first rain of the season or the first big rain of the season, you may have um, like there's chunks of road and hillside that may come down and that actually happened to us. Oh, yes. Um, yes. Unexpectedly, you know, coming out, you know, kind of hearing, you know, noise being a little different on the road yeah. and, and realizing that it was the side hill. And apparently that's a thing that happens every year. So I guess basically last night, from what I'm understanding, the the water or the road or the, basically the hill kind of sort of came down and sort of washed down here. Yeah. Nobody was too concerned about it, but it, it made that that, a mess. that that was nuts. It it came down really hard and, and the force of the water pushed down all the rocks and then the rocks went into the, the, the gutter where the drains were and then so the water couldn't go into the drains and then it full it pulled all the way down. And so it blocked the road. Ada, we actually bought a shovel. Yes, yeah, so I bought rocks, a shovel this time rocks, just in, in case because I figured you know what a <laughs> shovel is not a bad thing to have here because you just don't know. And then also too on, uh, you know, both of our houses are on a hill. And so if you're on a hill, most likely there's going to be run, water running down the hill. And so for instance, in our garage, although they've got cinder block, you know, against the hill, water still seeps through. And so we've actually have troughs in our garage that take the water that dropped from the hill and then uh, drain it out of our garage. And so that, that, that that's kind of, so the garage is very humid, not a place I would store uh, pretty much anything. You know, light bulbs go out and things of that nature, but what's interesting about our light bulbs, they're really, really high. So Ada took the effort to change the light bulb and- I'm not afraid of height. All right, all right, we have light way have light. up high. Not your typical garage. Freaking mine shaft in here. afraid of a few things, but definitely not Water, heights. being in water. Yeah, so she had to go, almost looks like an elevator shaft up our garage in order to change a light bulb. And so, so that was good. So I let her do those, those sort of things. It does so, take two people to change a light bulb. Yes, it does. It does take <laughs> two people to change a light bulb. And then the other thing that, that um, wiring is always, like electrical wiring is always a crapshoot here, right? They, they don't do go to US standards. And so that's something to watch out for. But uh, one thing uh, I did on this trip is I just got some inexpensive stereo um, speakers. All right, what are you doing? All right, well, there's like all these wires from decades here and some of them are speaker wires. I'm thinking if they're good speaker wires, might as well put up a speaker. But um, of course you can do wireless and all that stuff, but we're basic here. So let me, I'm trying to figure this out. Um, 
So, so our long legs come in handy. Apologize for putting the feet out of the thing. Nice we shot. Do, Woo! We do have a. Is that a rooster? A rooster, a, a one-legged, <laughs> a one-legged rooster. So, uh, what everyone do with that? I think you think you need these, can't you? Yeah. Uh, no, uh, so yeah, let's see how we do here. All right. Good luck. Be nice if that worked right there. So be, close. Uh oh. 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 Uh-oh. Oh, well. Oh, well. That's okay. You can figure out what you want to do with the rooster. All right, well. I ran some stereo wire, uh, and that can be interesting because it's not like you have drywall in the United States. You're literally running wire outside the house and, you know, drilling through concrete and all that. This looks... What are you going to do? You're going to rappel off the side of the roof with... Uh, this is, we brought this big old thing of speaker wire. Yes, wiring. Still on it, right? Right. <laughs> it's really cheap wire, so we'll see how it holds up. It's kind of with the consistency of licorice. Oh, it'll do fine in this uh, in this weather. Uh huh. Yeah, it's all coffee, right? Yeah. It turned out pretty cool. Yep. Um, right there, that's that speaker. Ooh. Yeah, the speaker. Oh yes, I that's our speaker right there. <laughs> Woo! Isn't that exciting? Next project, shade. Shade. Because it's a little toasty out here. A little bit. Obviously, getting shade is really, really important. One of the one of the best ways to do that is, uh, you know, buying these just uh, fabric sun shales, uh, sun 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 shale, sun sun sails. Yes, we sell sun shales <laughs> by the seashore. <laughs> anyway, anyway, so getting those, you know, a Costco has them here online on Amazon anywhere. Those are great, and uh, so 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 we got one. We. The, the better ones you can hook up via, they have stainless steel uh, uh, clasps and you can hook up via via stainless steel wire. And so we did that uh, this trip uh, for, for over our our, uh, our pool and also just, just for general sunshade. And that, that's that been really good. Did I say yeah, sunshade, yeah, right? Sunshade, sun, sun, sun sale. Sure. Sun, God. Oh. I don't know. All right, go ahead. Anyways, <laughs> yeah, so so the, the, the sunshade, now you got me all confused. <laughs> Um, is actually, uh, no, it, it's great because just a little bit, just a little bit of shade makes all the difference in terms of yeah. things being tolerable. All right, well, project one done. We have shade, that's always a good thing. Um, one thing to keep in mind um, during the summer season and especially, uh, you know, because the weather changes during the day, like during the morning, it looks like great. And then literally, like, like we went paddle boarding this week, uh, well, first of all, we had to wait for the waves to sort of calm down. We uh -huh. went paddle boarding, and um, because it was beautiful, there was no waves, it was great. And then, literally, maybe a half hour after we got back, put everything away, that's when the storms came. Yep. So it can come really fast. My point is, if you've got cushions and such, bring them in because even though like we've got a covered area here the wind will get everything wet um and, and granted they'll dry quickly but you don't want to have everything all yucky yeah um and also just once again because the sun is so strong if you're always putting them in the sun to try to dry that's going to eventually just kind of eat your color so just things to keep in mind all right so another item we we uh are, are working on are, are solar and solar panels so in the winter time there's no there's no uh, uh rain so you have to clean those off um, by yourself in the summertime that is not a problem whatsoever. And uh, the, the, the challenge there though is our, our solar panels and solar system are about probably 13 years old. And so they're probably do that via refresh. And probably weren't the most modernized being no, down no. here anyways. And so we're dealing with that now because I noticed one of the, uh, 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 the, one of the uh, banks of the solar panels, it, it'll, it'll charge up and then it'll immediately drop down to zero and do it over it like it's resetting itself. And so we need to get some, uh, take a, someone to take a look at that. Yeah, and I want to mention on the solar, you know, and I guess this is just me being mm. clueless because I've never <laughs> had solar um, before. And, you know, I thought, oh, how cool you have solar power. If the power goes out, you'll still have power. That's, uh, not, so nope. that's not how it works. So basically batteries are a huge maintenance pain and are expensive. And so basically when your power comes in, you're not using that power. It goes back into the, 
the grid. Basically, your, your meter runs backward or you get some, some benefit from that. Uh, the other problem is, and what we found here in Puerto Vallarta, is that system of taking the, the power and putting it back in the grid, sometimes that messes up with your electricity in your house. And so I think earlier on, some folks that installed solar systems have issues with their power going out because of the, the complex aspect of putting uh, energy back into the system. So another thing to look at. Right, right. And something to think about with if you need to have that continuous power Hashtag internet, which we'll talk about later. Yes. One of the one of the challenges with whenever we come back down here is you know we take the sheets off, we fold them up, um, you know they're all washed, they're completely dried, and then you come down here with all that moisture and you get to sometimes unveil moldy sheets. I'm trying to dehumidify the place a little bit in terms of all the spots we've got a lot of our electronics and clothes, and not that it's going to make a whole lot of difference, but. Uh, it's really amazing how quickly you buy this stuff and you get, um, you know, you get your little chambers of water um, month to month whenever we, um, we leave. So um, given that we're right now, we're in the midst of uh, rainy season, just going to do it a little bit proactively. I got to now figure out, I haven't used these, but I suppose you just put the stuff in the container and let it go. Remove dry home's dehumidifier cover. Take out the medium container. Open dry home's moisture, moisture absorber canister and pour the needed quantity into the medium container. Be nice if they told us how much is the needed quantity. Um, replace the container in the main body and seal. Okay, so it's kind of weird. I would think I would put the stuff in here. It shows that in the picture, but it says to put it in here. I'm thinking this is where the water is gone, going, so I think the directions are a little bit off. I'm putting the stuff in here. Those things are like full of water when we come How back How expensive in. are those? It seems it's not, like... It's not, they're not ex that expensive. Okay. You have a little containers and you get a big jug of it. Um, they have some that you can like hang in the closet and they totally fill up with water when they're done and it's really amazing like in like a month and a half we come back and we have these full bags of water in our closet my question is does it take a month and a half to fill them full of water a day <laughs> yeah it may, it may be sooner than you think we try to keep what we can open this big house does not have the same um sort of constraints uh because it is more even though the the rooms might be closed they are larger yeah and i think it's it's a little bit less of an issue than the other house that's that's got a lot smaller spaces and so when it gets wet it really takes a while for that humidity to, to, to kind of dry yeah yeah and speaking of laundry and stuff uh we have a laundry room which is pretty darn cool uh and you know th there's a lot of things in that when we first got there you know we had uh, you know animals coming in and out um we had, uh, but but the thing is, you can't close it off. To to this point, you want to close it off completely. So one of the things I did is put up a, a screen, actually the same material that the sun, sun sail. sail sun set sa sail sun sail shade. Yes, yes, that material. And put it up like this, and I'm going to use galvanized wire because galvanized wire is a new thread. <laughs> we use it for everything in Mexico. I don't know. It is what it is. So we'll see. Hey, that's looking really good. That's going to really help. Good star to the husband. Uh, uh, that's worked really well yeah. because I can actually hang my laundry. It, there's airflow, so mm -hmm. it still breathes. Um, and then, but the dust it's really eliminated the dust. So it's actually made it a very, very usable space. Yeah. And it's also a little, pri a little privacy, not because you need privacy in there, but the fact that when people come in, they don't see our they don't laundry. See our <laughs> and washing machines and any electronics have a lot of problems here just because of the humidity and power surges and things of that nature. Um, and, uh, but, but in your case, yeah, the washing machine was leaking, right? 
I still don't know. There's a put there's a puddle of water with it. I think what it is, I think the seal is the seal is I think it's yeah. shot. So yeah. but anyway, that that's another item. And, and and the washing machine actually ended up it's got a it had a layer of mold around it and I tried to put some cushions in that, that didn't come out so well. I had made moldy cushions. But yeah, I actually made made things worse. I'm like, I'm gonna see what happens if I wash these and it yeah, I did, I did not improve the situation. You gave cushions to the mold. Yes. Or, yeah, mold to the cushions. You got a lot more to go, my friend. A lot more to go. Termitas, termites, that is the constant battle here in Puerto Vallarta. If you don't have them, you'll probably get them. I think I read somewhere that 60% of the houses are infested. There's just really no way to, to get around that. And so you have to treat your, your furniture and your wood, of course. Um, but there's certain things, uh, there's two types of termites. So the ones we usually talk about in our previous videos are the ones that swarm and fly. So they come around, what, what, what month is it typically? Uh, it's in the springtime, springtime, like March, April March, is kind of when they come. Yeah, they'll, they'll swarm and if they see a light or they see something they like, they'll swarm in, drop their wings and then go after it. Um, and then you're good pretty much for the rest of the year, um, you know, on the swarming aspect of it. But then there are also terrarian, and, and I'm not a bug expert, but there's like the subterranean termites that come up. What they do is they build their little tunnels through mud and they try to seek out places to eat. You can't get around that. They're always going to be around. And so what we found uh, here, we've got these wood beams, these old wood beams that have lasted forever. But all of a sudden we came back one day. And there's all these little tunnels being built everywhere, looking for looking for food. And so it was actually after a big rain. Yeah. And, and I yeah. was looking at all these like sort of it's like wow, it, it got really dirty on the ground. I realized it was actually the wood from the beams that was yeah, or the mud. I think it was primarily the mud. It, it might have been whatever it was. This. Well, the termites are here. <laughs> and. Short-term uh, WD-40, can't hurt. What I found is one of the key ingredients or one of the key things to, to use, like with everything else, is WD-40. Um, yeah, and go so, to Costco, buy several cans. Yeah, and so what I did is we, we, we knocked off all of these little tunnels and then sprayed the heck out of everything. If there was holes anywhere, we sprayed in those holes. Do that just to stop it until we can get the, the exterminator in there. The key thing is, is I know sometimes people are asking like, hey, you know, I want to bring my this, that, my... My great grandmother's, you know, <laughs> whatever, like dresser, um, you know, just keep in mind if it's wood, it might have a tough time down here. Wood or steel. One of our lights in our, our, our bathroom, our downstairs bathroom, it just, I, I think the cleaning lady was cleaning it and it just fell off. And it was the mechanism that held the light into the wall actually rusted out and then the, 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 the light fell. And so... That's one thing I had to fix on this trip. Just one thing. <laughs> just one thing, just one thing. And trimming. Aww. That's something we've never thought I would be doing here, but. It's a flower for me. What I was really surprised about was when we came back after like pretty significant rain, is oh my goodness, the plants flourish. So Ada, I hear you're a gardener. I hate gardening, but. I don't know. You better do these things because they're starting to go through the, the wires. Wires? You don't, you don't want to have our bushes in the wires? No. Uh, so, yeah, there's just a bit more gardening. Um, and what I'm realizing, I mean, we're tall, but I need to acquire some longer tools to, 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 to get up high. To get to, to high places. We have a pool person, he does a great job. Keeps it, well, he just out the chemicals and the pool thing. We'll go into that probably another episode. But what was interesting is I noticed that there were like just random stuff. Like why are there paint, why is there paint marks in the bottom of our pool? Obviously our pool guy hasn't cleaned that or doesn't, you know, work with that. So this is my job today. It doesn't suck. Yeah, it could be worse. Yeah. <laughs> All right, have fun. Thanks. All right, how'd it go? Oh, I did pretty good. You know, the, the knife didn't work. And basically what I was trying to do was scrape paint off the bottom of the pool. I don't know how it got there. The Brillo pad didn't work. So thank goodness we had a little sandpaper. Oh, good check. job. And about 50 times underneath the water. <laughs> All, All right, good. good for you. Anyway, uh, other things are, um, Actually, this is an interesting one. You know, there's, we do have a lot of glass, right? And so we try to keep it as clean as possible. 
But one thing when you have like class, uh, glass doors, and that's that's one thing in our on our current doors, we have these small windows, which I think are better in our, our main living room area, which is really nice. Up where our bedrooms are, we've got glass doors. And if you have them nice and clean, uh, you know, you gotta watch out. And you, you birds will try to to fly in and, and bunk themselves. Yeah, and, I mean, and these are on the inside. These are more of the interior yeah. of the house. It's not even, we're not even talking yeah. about it. Yeah, and so I really feel bad about this. I, I was actually working and I was on a conference call and I was right by the window and I hear this big thud and I look over and I see this for, for a bird, you know, on the ground belly up. <laughs> and I, I was like, oh my gosh, I had to get to this conference call and I'm watching this, you know, dead bird that just... Uh, well, it wasn't dead. Yeah, yeah, that's a good thing, right? You were dead. It was a stunned bird. It was it was very stunned. I mean, it was it was pretty much knocked unconscious. But I went out there and it looked at me and it kind of hopped around a little bit and then I just left it alone and it flew away. So yay, birdie! You survived that one, but don't do it again. We also have a, a, an upcoming video that we're going to talk about the internet. So we won't talk about internet here, but there are some specific things to think about uh, dealing with uh, stuff like uh, uh, just basically internet providers kind of dropping their signals. Uh, power surges as we talked about earlier and really thick Mexican walls that are hard to get through so uh, also you know uh, like subscribe yeah. and uh, watch watch that one as well after this one I guess and 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 last thing when you when you do that like button um, if it's raining you got to make sure that you have a dry thumb when you have to then Use your thumbprint on the oh that's right <laughs> on, on, on the on the uh, way to get in so uh, we had a little issue. I'm yeah, not, yeah. Not, well, you know that the, the, the tangerine travels, dude. You said he has a similar lock, right? Uh, I it, it looked kind of similar, but here, here's this the is thing. like the thumbprint, but it. Well, well, here's the thing. To activate, sometimes to activate these locks, you've got to sort of, you know, you got to, you got to, you know, press them, and it sort of turns on the keypad. Some um, there's many locks that have actually um, that are fingerprint recognition, um, and I tell you, if you've got, you know, if it's if it's really humid, if if you're Thumb is wet. Um, you know, it may not. It may not work. And even we were. We were. We've been locked out a couple. Yeah, times. yeah. Especially when it's raining. And so we don't care to get wet. You know, we just walk around the, the rain here. It's nice. But when it's uh, raining and you're wet and Ada tries three times to get in the door and locks the system out so we can't get in, I'm stuck in the rain waiting and waiting and waiting. So. That's all right. Anyway, it's nice. That's it. We'll see you guys later. See you later. And like, subscribe, and uh, look forward to catching up with you. Check out our Facebook group too, right? Yep. Because we just had a Facebook uh, a group meetup, um, and that was just awesome. And, and we had like 16 people during low season. So cool, you guys sticking it out here. Awesome. Take care, everybody.